Is this the perfect place for this? Oh yeah, because, and I want you to know something. When you publish something like I am on Facebook, it is a copyright. I'm gonna suppose Fried Knickers right now. I hope we could see the clock while I waited for it to strike. He's one of them. Oh yes. Oh yes. He's one of these secret society. Chapter 13. Friedenakers and Masons. F-R-I-E-D-E-N-K-R-S. Not the other spelling. And I have this copyrighted. I have the domains registered. And I'm publishing this right now. Do not plagiarize me. Do not plagiarize me. Do not plagiarize me. If you want to do a co-work together with me, you want to interview me, you want to get it, my bigger book will lay this in so hard. This has been researched by for over 30. I have things that nobody ever has. Nobody. No historian, no, no. I have exposed. This is mine. As the Masonic Temple I restored is where this was hatched. Free knickers. Fleeing impoverished conditions, not free thinkers. In September of 06, I was coming from the track in Evanston, Wyoming, in 80 miles from my house. It was late. I was just off the freeway, the poem that I just read before. And I headed west on Highway 39 where I live in this country. I live in the countryside, very rural and dark. It was the only car on the road. A car came flying up on me. I assumed it was the police. They pulled everyone over out there when it's late. They just assume. I call it late night profiling, which I'm sure a high percentage have been drinking. Not me, I'm not that dumb. A yellow Hummer came flying up behind me, well over 100 miles an hour. I saw I had no Mexico plates. I thought to myself, I hope they know this road. My big house was built right on that infamous 39, Highway 39's death curve. Many killed there over the years, so as I traveled down the road, I was looking. Sure enough, they did not know the road, and they rolled dozens of times, landing right in the ditch next to the old driveway. I had the house home stolen from me four years earlier. I have around the corner, I live around the corner what I call the little house. I was the only one out there. There were six of them, Ogden High, after the prom. It was ugly, by the way. What a I mean, this all ties together as I write so much. The WPA, Ogden High is being restored, is the quintessential WPA building in the country. Mariner. Out of there, six of the Ogden High School at the prom, it was ugly. One of the, the Hummer was on one of them's heads. It had been raining out there, the only thing that saved him. I knew every square inch of the land I had built on it and lived on it for a decade. To make a very ugly story, that I will write about one day shortly. Melina was 15, the same age as my youngest daughter. I presumed they were friends of hers. I was given her mouth to mouth and chest compressions as she died. All the ugly things I have been through in my life, nothing compares to that night. I shake even writing about it. I still have the blood covered shirt I was wearing in a box in a sacred place. In February of 1999, I was driving out the drive of the said house of mine, my masterpiece, piece of art. I had worked and designed and decorated for years. There was a white snow barn owl flying right next to me all the way up 39 for about two miles. The owl kept looking at me. I knew it. if you see an owl flying in the daytime, it is very powerful symbolism in many cultures. I went to one of my workers that worked for me, Calvin, to all you Ognites, you know the guy who rides around on his bike all over Weber County with the umbrella, he is Navajo. So I asked him, he called a Navajo friend. He said, it is not good. I drove him and there, I drove home and there lied the very owl dead right at the top of my driveway, right where Highway 39, my old long drive met. I knew then, oh no, death had come to the spot before. I called Calvin, he called his friend, he said, take the dead owl and bury it beneath the biggest tree in your yard. So I did. I had planted a cottonwood and it was growing fast, five years old. The rest is history. I went on to one of the worst luck and or fate runs in history. I drove by that house and the marker her friends have put up every day. I say a prayer every time I pass, going and coming. I think of her life a lot. My bad fortunes are tiny, little nothings in comparison to that young girl's horrible fate. Again, remember I wrote this two years ago. Freed knickers, not freed knickers, huge difference. Mariner Eccles was involved with the Ogden, Utah Freedenickers, a secret society that met every two weeks and did what secret societies do, try to control the world. The locals did call them free drinkers. They met in one of Ogden's grand mansions. Again, Leslie Hodson designed home. 
right next to the Wattis house and others. This society was nothing to just say they were a bunch of drunk dreamers. Any historian says that is so neo-ignorant as pathetic. Robert Hinckley and Dean Bramhall were both leaders of this society. And if you don't think they were powerful men, you are totally ignorant. I spent my entire life as a plaster and stucco contractor in Ogden, Utah. Even when I was working as a derivative specialist and wealth protection strategist, I still had my plastering business. I have plastered personally thousands of homes and businesses in Ogden, Utah. I've been inside on top, all around, nearly every building in Ogden, thousands of homes, including the restoration of many of Ogden's gr grandest historical structures, residential and commercial. I've worked on nearly every single building on 25th. The first historical building I worked on 25th when I was 17 years old was the old China Temple for George Pappas. I have been down under the infamous underground Ogden tunnels many times. It is old basements with concrete passages. I plastered work all up and down that street 25th. I have 24 jobs on Washington Boulevard alone. Again, completely restored the 1905 temple by myself. I was working on the Ben Loman Hotel where John Browning's freaking invented the machine gun, where the liars knocked it down on purpose, the Orphan Theater, one of America's grandest buildings ever. I've worked in Wattis' famous house. I knew Robert Hinckley personally. I stuccoed his dealership and other work projects. I was working on Hinckley Building the day my daughter was born in July of 85. It was 105 degrees July 2nd, 19. His, he and his son, Junior, great men. I love them working them. By the way, they just tore that down. I got some great footage. And if you think Robert Hinckley was some, what an incredible man that was. I did all this stuff. They just tore it down simultaneously with the promontory towers. I got some footage of it. And he was part of the early group of freed knickers. So was Mariner Eccles. So was this guy. So were the McKays. So, were the, I mean, both my grandpas. They were powerhouses. That's where the WPA, that's where the CCC, that's where the greatest society idea was hatched. FDR says it himself. Mariner calls it out himself in his own written biography. I worked on the ceilings for Matt Browning, where this his famous car collection was. I did completely re uh, original plaster the exterior or the Hinkley Airport building and Dirk plaster work in the interior. I did a few projects of my own on that top of that old tower. Oh yeah. I have restored dozens of interiors and exteriors of our famous Mormon dwellings, and I matched the old barn, Barnes house in Kaysville with straw fiber plaster, which belonged to Brigham Young. I have my mark everywhere. I come from a very old Weber County name. I have extremely, extremely Mormon and early famous bloodlines from all four grandparents. I am the great-great-grandson of the infamous so-called Mormon outlaw Ike Potter. I have some of his personal writings left to me by my grandma. I'm the grandson of Abraham Hunsaker IV, and he did have a huge family. He didn't have a huge family like Los Mormon bloodline. Six granddaughters and six grandsons. I have said for years that if my mother would have been a boy, I'd be Abraham Hunsaker VI. She laughs. He had all girls, three of them. I am the greatest grandson of Moses Tracy, and do come from the Blanche line of strong men. I did not spend my time just as your typical construction worker. I came from a family of surgeons and doctors and professors and very accomplished people. All Mormons, all four lines, Polygamist. I have spent 40 years hanging in the Stewart Library on this campus. I saw and talked with Mark Hoffman when he was up to his tricks. I have read every Mormon document, book, or archive piece of literature you can think of. I have read and found things that when I speak of them, people think I am crazy. I have told very influential Mormons in Utah stories about what I know about the Freedom Knickers and about Ogden's Lodge 18 and Mariner Eccles and FDR's ties. They're all vibrant, tell me there was no such society. Go to Mariner's books. He wrote about it himself. He talks about it himself. I have found things. I have had conversations with dead and alive, extreme powerful, now dead and alive, powerful men from the home right here in Ogden, Utah, the man who did shape this world and country, more than most even historians know. I have been intimately involved with some of their bloodlines, more than one, to the estates of these men. Both my grandparents were heavily involved in business with all the powers of Ogden. I have done business with all of them, every single one of them. I personally, as a little boy, knew Mariner. My grandparents, he were involved in business. My father and he were friends. He knew me by name as a small boy. At the very young age, became fascinated. I I became fascinated with history and Mormon history. I have eaten it up. I have listened. I have read. I have lived it. I have slept with it. I have lived with the stones to push down on with my, with their hands. I know where they are, all of them. 
I have stole I have stolen Hodson's we I know where Hodson stolen Weber High infamous fish and where it is at. I have hand carved stones of pieces of terracotta made in, from Hodson in jobs I have done. I have no Mormon history, not by reading contemporized books, which I have read hundreds of them. I know from working with them and their children and all my own family. I have been searching library state cells for decades. In regard to the freaking niggers, the spelling of the name is very significant. Free niggers, the old German word for the smotic word for free spirit. FDR and Eccles were connected at, to the Masons heavily. There is no doubt anyone tries to discount that is totally in the dark. All presidents before FDR were Masons and their cabinets. Joseph Smith was a Mason. How can we, how can we come to believe that that is somehow bad or evil? is beyond me. There is nothing bad about it. It is a philosophy, and I am not a Mason, not in the society. A rock Mason, a little rare term. Just how Masons started. I hand chisel and stack and build things from sand and rocks. I love it. I have never laid one fake piece of stone in my life. A few fake minerals, quite a few, but no fake rock or stucco. I love the new sightings to the stone hedge, a graveyard that lined up with the heavens to the socialist stone to honor the concept in the very public way, a conceptual of their ancestors. I head to the river and up to the river along the edge to the round the same as the stone hedge, a wood round circle to honor the living, stone for the dead, wood for the living. Like has been said about tilling the earth and painting about it, Grant Wood among others. I love Gothic of any kind. Our old 24th Street Vodok, now that was Gothic. Stones, making things from stone and sand. I have a very deep relationship with frescoes. frescoes. I have hundreds of them all over Weaver County. I work alone for the most part. I am one of the very few, very, very few real original Latin plus true, honest, real fresco artists in the country. There are few, but very few, not many in the whole world. I understand the Masonic theology, not from the enrollment. I have never been involved in that organization from the concept as it began as a rock, as a stonemason. I know the tie between the Freed Knickers and the Masons of 18. Let's be safe. When Teddy used to come here, he'd stay at Hinckley's place up in Eden called the Garden of Eden. That's where the relationships were built. As FDR says himself, when I knew he was going to press, first call was to Mariner and Ogden, the IMF, the World Bank, the CCC, the WPA, the Federal Reserve, named them. All here, they were progressives. They were the great socialists. He calls himself the Great Socialist. Their progressive ideas created the strongest middle class in the history of the world. And any of these assholes who want to argue with me, bring it on. Bring it on with your neocon, radical, far-right, free market fairy tales. As the Eccles family disgust me discounting this man's life. This man and this society in our town created the strongest, most prosperous, middle class, the greatest socialist country in the history of the world, the United States of America, 1945 to 1980. I love the new insight to Eric. I know the Ogden Freed Nickers better than anyone. I will guarantee that. I know that they changed the spell, and I know how influential the Ogden Utah very early Mormon grants were, and I know how they parlayed their work into gigantic fortunes. Remember, they came from the slums of Glasgow, David Penniless. Mariner Eccles was the president of at least company, at least 16 companies, a very young age, including vice president of Amalgamated Sugar, that my grandfather was in heavily involved with. He and the Brownie Forge set up business together, and their banking enterprise was gigantic. He was brilliant. When the banking fortunes of Ogden, Utah were tumbling in the early 30s, and the banking fortunes were massive here, all the train lines met here, all the commerce was here, the Great, great Basin. Everything, the great resources had to go to market here. He, he was not tumbling, he was picking up the pieces. My grandfather's farm, that I still live on the family farm, as many Ogdenites were row croppers, tomatoes. Northern Utah was the tomato capital of the world for decades, the acidy soil of the ancient lake floor. They deposited their one check they would receive a year on an Ogden bank, it fell four days later. You have to remember, Ogden was the junction city, the vast, vast, unbelievable natural resources of the West were first very first tapped by Mormons. In the Eccles case, from the infamous slums of Glasgow to billions and billions of today's dollars. Fast. Remember when the Mormons came to Salt Lake, it was still Mexico in 1847. The U.S. hired Brigham to send men and a couple incredible women to fight that war. Go to San Diego and look at the marker. My great-grandfather, Abe Hansaker, is on top of that marker. The fighting was pretty well over by the time they got there. Although they nearly starved and thirsted to death, that very year, they traveled up the California coast to a small, small outpost named San Francisco, and Overstonders Pass. Remember, it was 1846, just one year earlier. It earned its name. It met up with this meet up with the Salt Lake. The rest of their detoured off from the first path as they left the trail and went all the way to Mexico, all the way. Up to Cal Who do you think? <laughs>
It was Mexico then. Mormon Trail, talk about a long detour. I think she says it, Ligor, uh, even LaGuardia says it the best. We didn't jump the border, the border jumped us. I've got my family's been here since the 16th century. Beautifully said. I know when the Mormons were at Sutter's Mill and scooped up bags of gold. Which do you, I know which Mormons got it. Which do you think discovered the gold, not the old man, the men working for the old man, including my great-great-grandpa. Former Mormons waiting out at the winter so they could cross Donners in the spring to meet up with their wives. I have lived, I have ate it, I have slept it, I have drank it. Mormon history and Utah history, Ogden history for decades. I absolutely love it. I cannot get enough of it. I am very deeply into a book about all this subject matter.